to Garage Garage SVU. Let's no, see. No, no, Zach. It's Garage Garage SVU. The special vehicles unit? That's right. Oh. And today we are finishing up our tracker build. What do you think? I think it looks sick. If you haven't been following along with the build, we had a really short deadline to finish this up because we found out that there's open tryouts for uh, to qualify for X Games Hooligan class and Kibby Tech and I wanted to try that out. Well, we've never done it before and that seems like a really good entry level <laughs> entry level competition. Last night, the gang and I, so uh, go Kyle over there. That's for you! Whoa, whoa, what was that? That's for you! That's for you! So last night, the team, we all uh, we were grinding until about five this morning to get this to a point where it does one very important thing. And that is this. She runs. What do you think, run? This thing is sick. Super quiet too. Well, right now. it's quiet at idle. Dang. These guys put this together in like zero time. Yeah, That's well, crazy. we technically did it over the course of two days, but we didn't start working until about 6 p.m. each day. So, I mean, we got a total of, I think, like 16, 17 hours in this. It did wow. not look anything like this yesterday when I left. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. I thought it was a completely different bike. I was like, oh, sick. They brought in a different bike for parts or something. I don't know. Yeah, cut to the, uh, you can see the before and after here. Obviously, with any build, you're gonna have a few little issues, and today, that's what we're gonna be covering. Um, we're just gonna tighten everything up. We got a few more parts to put on the bike. So with this, last night, you see that we did the uh, s, &S Hooligan 1250 kit, so cams, jugs, pistons, all that good stuff. We installed their exhaust along with their intake as well. Uh, my buddy Fonz was kind enough to bring over the Speed Merchant Mid-Glide Triple Trees, which are sick, and that was like a really big thing we were going to need. But when he did that, because we have now a wider spacing between the fork legs, we have to increase the length of our axle just to fit. Corey and Steve over at Tracker Die, they actually uh, took an axle and machined it up, so they're bringing it over here right now, uh, along with a few other parts. One problem, and the only problem that we ran into on this entire build, was that these uh, pushrod tube seals that are in the bottom of the pushrod tubes, uh, we pinched a couple of them and they've leaked. I was only able to grab some old style gaskets, but we're gonna change those today with some upgraded ones and we'll show you how to do that. Other than that, everything else is together. Corey wired up the bike. We swapped the ignition over to a single fire style ignition. Now these do have dual plug heads, which is great, but it makes wiring so much more complicated. And this is, I mean, you get a pretty equal amount of performance out of this setup. So tightens up the package, makes everything easier. And that's kind of the key here. We just want simplicity. Other than that, this thing is basically ready to rip. Uh, it needs to be heat cycled another time and then we need to actually properly break it in. And then we're good to go. We'll start putting some miles on it. Uh, we're also still waiting for some tires here too. So we've got some uh, Dunlop race tires coming for this thing. So that'll look better. We'll probably take care of this wheel too and paint it or powder coat it, uh, depending on what we decide we're gonna do for the livery. So, let's begin. All right, so we've moved into the big shop. The first order of business is we gotta pull off all this stuff that we put on yesterday, you know, tank, seat, exhaust, just so we can get to these gaskets down here. We're gonna pull the rocker box tops off. I'm not sure if we gotta pull the heads, but hopefully we don't. We're about to find out though. So anyway, start tearing it down.
Basically, I'm just trying to get it ready so when Corey and Steve get here, guys from Tracker Die, uh, we can replace these seals that are leaking. Unfortunately, if you want to get to these seals down here at your lower push rod tubes, I mean, I'm not so sure about this. I may be wrong, but it looks like you gotta take the heads off. So before I do that, I'll wait for them to get here and check it out. But for the time being, we are gonna change the clutch cable. Fonz was nice enough to bring this Buell style clutch cable, right? And the difference here is right here at the tip where it connects to the lever. This has like a horseshoe style. This is more your traditional dirt bike motorcycle style so this is what we need to run our sick new flow motorsport uh clutch loader this thing right here bam sick hella brap anyway i'm gonna put that on uh what's your steps steps real simple first we're gonna loosen up this bad man jammer right here so this is your adjuster nut right this is how you can increase or decrease tension on the actual lever here so uh we're gonna basically max that out to make it as long as possible. Then we're gonna come to this side, pull off this derby cover here, and then this will expose the clutch. So there's a nut right here, we'll loosen that up, and then that'll allow us to pull the uh, other side of the clutch lever assembly out. Yeah. Why do they call this a derby cover? Don't know, that's Harley stuff. Uh, you know what this is called in Harley world? It's not a kickstand, it's a jiffy stand. Why? It's out of me. Okay, so uh, I found this out. You don't need to pull the heads off to get the pushrod tubes out. You just need to get the pushrods out. And all you gotta do is pull the rocker box off, pull the uh, pushrods off, and then undo. Actually, here, we'll just do it. Oh, God. All right, so you just pull that little guy out. And then these guys just gonna slide out. Oh. Got to slide that up so it gets off that dowel. Look at that. And these are what we're leaking. Some aftermarket brands make much better gaskets for these, and that's what we're going to use. We've gone about as far as we can go uh, before Tracker Die Bros get here. In the meantime, we're going to install these sick ass Flow Motorsports pegs. Check the uh, primary chain tension. See if that thing's all loose. So this chain right here is your primary chain, and it's not bad. Probably tighten up a little bit. Yeah, that's much better. So now we've got just a little bit of play. You need some play. You can't have that thing rock hard in there. What's up, players? What's up? Hey, Ram. What's up, player? What's up? We're here. So these, these are what we needed. Now, these gaskets here it seem they're to be a thinner. different material yeah, and they're a little different. Yeah, they, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're way more like, like thin here. Squishy. And these seem like really kind of stiff. I will say this though, somehow we managed to put two of them on correctly. Only two leaks. Two out of four. Are you gonna replace them all? We're gonna replace them all. Makes and we're sense. gonna hope that we have zero out of four leaking this time. As the motor rotates, the lifters are self like the lifters self adjust by pressure. Okay. So as they come up, once the lifter compresses, it shoots oil up through the pushrod tube, which is hollow, and that's how the whole top end gets oiled. So if those leak, then all that oil just out. Oh, look at this one. This one's fine. Oh, it looks better. Oh, has that been the yep. uh, got the, it the problem maker this whole time? Got it. Is that all of them? We're dialed, yeah. Engine all buttoned up, squared away. Got a new uh, axle here, courtesy of Steve. So we're gonna slide this in and uh, let's, let's put, that, uh, put that tire back on, or that wheel. This side, the axle meets up with this side, so we so might have to add a little piece. Yeah, that one will see. float a bit. We'll see where we're at. There it goes. Not bad for guessing. Hell yeah. So, you want to cinch the nut before... They put this little fancy hole in here so that you can hold it while you tighten it. Because if you cinch this first, 
when you tighten it down, it's gonna suck the fork blades in. Mm -hmm. So this side floats. And then the pinch bolt pinches down so that everything can be nice and free. If you tighten this first and then tighten that down, they bow in. All right, we're good here. Got everything buttoned up, got the exhaust on correctly. Now the one thing you want to look out for with these is you want to make sure that the proper tube is on the top and bottom because the bend is ever so slightly different. This is how it should look when it's done. Without further ado, hell yeah. All right, so. Just got done heat cycling this thing. We're gonna probably go for a little ride around here, but it's dark, so we really won't be able to see much on camera. Thank you, Corey. Absolutely. Steve, dude, really appreciate it. Tomorrow we're gonna head down to Biltwell and uh, pick up the finishing touches for this. So all the hardware for the uh, handlebars, risers, and all that good stuff. It's exciting stuff. See you tomorrow. bright new day. We are headed to Biltwell out in Temecula right now. I got Kyle with me. Got the Hank with us. And now there to pick up the final touches. So bars, throttle, risers, and maybe some gear, a few other choice things. Most importantly though, I think we're going to be able to rip some of uh, Biltwell's bikes that they built. Hank, fire up the tunes. So we just made it here to Biltwell out in Temecula. We're gonna go in, see Otto, see what he's got in store for us. So we're here with the man himself, Mr. Mike Deutsch. Hey guys, how's it going? AKA Otto, he's the man here at Biltwell, so he's gonna get us helped out with uh, the parts we need. You cool with that? Yeah, absolutely, let's All do right. it. Here's the deal, we're, we need to run a 7 8 bar. Yeah. Because of this clutch we got, so. Absolutely. You think we can get hooked up with that and some yeah. risers, maybe a throttle tube? Yeah, here's a mid 7 8. Sick. That's our Biltwell tracker mid. Yeah, so then this is the one you want. Sick. Yeah, that'll work. Cool risers. Oh yeah. We look good with those bars. Seven eight single throttle. Cool. Single uh, pull. That'll work. What else you need, Zach? Uh, you know what? Maybe a helmet. So this is our lane splitter. It's kind of our more uh, aggressive, progressive helmet. Killer. We got everything we're gonna need here to finish off our bike. We got grips. Got some of their slimline risers, the all-important throttle, and then some sick bars. Oh nice, these are nice and wide too. The wider the bar, the better the power steering. Hell yeah, more torque baby. That's right. Looking good, well thank you Otto. Well now that we got all of the, uh, the hardware stuff, we figured that instead of waiting in gridlock traffic on a Friday, we might go take some motorcycles out and have some fun. So they've pulled out a couple of choice bikes for us to go test out. Hot! Game on, baby. Kyle, you ready? Yeah. Let's get it. much fun to be had out here. It's a great way to spend a Friday at work. Alright, 
So, we are here at Home Stretch. Gonna put on the final parts, get these bars all assembled, all the stuff we got from Biltwell. We also got these uh, rocks. Basically, they they help to create some pullback for your, your risers, so those bolts into the risers. That'll be pretty cool. Uh, got all of our Flow Motorsports stuff, the shifter and brake lever in. These are sick. So it's cool that I'll match these guys. And then top off our bar with this uh, Flow Motorsports clutch assembly. And then uh, a new clutch cable with a barrel style dealio. And got a number plate from Tracker Die Bros. So we're gonna throw this on real quick. Time lapse, let's go. All right, so we got all our stuff on. Got our Flow Motorsports shifter and brake lever. Looks tough. Seven ace bars. Got the kickback Johnnies. New grips, throttle. Unfortunately, we couldn't use the Flow Motorsports uh, clutch lever because if you're using an aftermarket clutch lever on your Harley, chances are it's gonna need a barrel style end and not a horseshoe style end or whatever the hell you're gonna call it. Fonz, our buddy you saw in the last few episodes, had brought us an extra one he had lying around. The problem was it was just two inches too short, so it wasn't gonna work. So if you know if the clutch is not working, the, bi the bike ain't working. So unfortunately we can't run that, um, given our time crunch here. But that's okay. Made that work. Definitely rigged it with some Gorilla tape, <laughs> but it's staying for now, is what it is. Uh, but, Good news is, our Dunlops came in. Got these sick Dunlop DT3s. Not only are these gonna perform well, but it's gonna complete the look of this bike because that looks a little whack. Beyond that, it's final pieces. We just gotta get the livery done. After that, showtime. Okay, so. Time's finally come. It's time to address the livery on this bike. So we've got our buddy Will coming from Rap Legends. He's also the one that uh, hooked up all the stuff on the Intimidator truck from Building Battle. While that's going down, I'm gonna pull off these wheels. Jeff Fonzie's gonna take the uh, two wheels over to Speed Merchant, mount up these Dunlops for us, put it all back together. And by the next episode, we're gonna be racing. Got our Dunlops on. We got Will from Rap Legends here. Squat, squat, what up? Yeah. It's time to get this thing looking right. Next time you see it, it's gonna be a wide open throttle. There you have it, bike is done, it's ready to rip. Thank you guys for following along this far. And remember, Thursday, June 20th, City of Industry at the Industry Hills Expo. We're gonna be out there at the Harley Davidson and Born Free Stampede, smashing on this thing, and hopefully Kibby can qualify for X Games. And remember, if you like this motorcycle stuff on our content, 
Comment below. If you want to see more of it, let us know so we can actually do more of it. I don't know why I'm doing this with my hands. <laughs>